Hi everybody, I'm just gonna go over the digestive system notes. So uh, these notes are gonna be a basic facsimile of the notes that I've already scanned up to Blackboard. So if you're comfortable with your ability to just study based on that material that I've uh, put forward for you, then don't worry about listening to this audio. Um, I'm not going to say anything in this audio that you will be accountable for on the exam that's not already written in those notes, all right? But if you're more of an auditory learner, and this is just a better way to be able to um, take in or process or study this material, then, then go ahead. I'm hoping that it's going to be uh, helpful for at least some students. So first, we're going to talk about the different uh, processes of digestion. So first of all, we have ingestion. Oh, I got to activate my little digital pencil here. All right, here we go. So hopefully this works. So first, we have ingestion. This is just the, simply the process where food is taken into the body. And then we have propulsion. This is the process that actually moves food through the alimentary canal. And by the way, alimentary canal is going to be the series of contiguous hollow structures in our digestive system through which the foodstuffs is actually passing through. So the foodstuffs, all right, that stuff that started off as food that we're starting to systematically digest so that we can take uh, those nutrients into the body does not actually pass through every organ of our digestive system as we'll talk about as we go along. The alimentary canal, by the way, is also known as our gastrointestinal tract or GI tract. So there's two major processes of propulsion that we have. We have swallowing, which is this initial um, process of propulsion, which is voluntary. This is actually the process of conveying food from our oral cavity into our esophagus. Esophagus is the tube that basically takes the food from the oral cavity to the stomach. And then we have peristalsis, which is an involuntary process. So peristalsis are the, or is rather, the progressive wave-like contractions that move foodstuffs through the alimentary canal. And by move, what we really mean is that the muscular walls or these smooth muscle reinforced walls of these tubular organs of the alimentary canal actually squeeze the foodstuffs as they move through. And more specifically, if you want a more precise definition of what peristalsis really is, is that the smooth muscle cells of adjacent segments of the alimentary canal or GI tract organs alternatively contract and relax. All right, so uh, a third process here we wanna go over is mechanical digestion. With mechanical digestion, foodstuffs is just physically broken down. So you start off with foodstuffs that is composed of large particles, and then you're breaking those large particles down into smaller particles. So there's several different sub-processes that can be classified as mechanical digestion, which we're going to give reference to as we move along. So the first one is chewing. Otherwise known as mastication. And this is just the breaking of food 
into smaller pieces to increase the total surface area. We also have churning. This is a subprocess of mechanical digestion. Churning occurs in the stomach, by the way, uniquely. And churning is basically a mixing of the food so that the foodstuffs can be mixed with enzymes. And enzymes are proteins that facilitate chemical reactions. So mix food with enzymes. And these enzymes are secreted by specialized cells within the wall of the stomach. And then also we have segmentation. which occurs in the small intestine. And this is where we have the non-adjacent segments of the alimentary canal contracting and relaxing. And by the way, guys, I'm trying my best to write well with this stylus. It, it's not as precise as I would like it to be. In retrospect, you know, I wish I had gone with a Microsoft Surface. I think the Microsoft pen is a lot more precise. So this is the best I can do. Again, if you're having trouble reading this writing, then just please go back to my... Um, uh, packets that have been posted online where I actually have my own handwriting um, superimposed on the packets. All right, so that's going to be your, your go-to place to, to hopefully develop your own notes um, as you start to study this material. So number four, we also want to go over chemical digestion. Actually, I got to get the eraser out here. Start over on that one. Chemical digestion. Uh, this oftentimes involves hydrolysis. You guys remember hydrolysis from AP1. This is where you break larger molecules apart into smaller molecules with water. So you're using water to break apart um, these molecules. So this is a uh, type of chemical reaction or classification of chemical reaction that we see throughout biochemistry, where we're actually using water to be able to break larger molecules down into their smaller subunit molecules. So we're breaking down carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids into their smaller, more usable subunit molecules with the addition of water. In this process, or I should say processes, which there are many, um, are directed by enzymes. And these enzymes are secreted into the alimentary canal. Or sometimes these enzymes are actually tethered to the walls of the alimentary canal or to its walls. These enzymes, by the way, when they're tethered to the walls of the alimentary canal are known as brush border
enzymes. Let me do that again. This is supposed to be the word enzymes. Sorry about that. All right. So brush border enzymes, uh, we get the term brush border from the fact that the uh, columnar epithelium lining much of the GI tract has these little finger-like processes at um, the apical surface of these cells or the inward-facing surface of these cells. Um, this surface comes in contact with the foodstuffs and uh, this surface is thrown out into these little finger-like projections to increase the surface area for absorption of the nutrients that result from the digestion of those foodstuffs. Well, we also have lots of enzymes tethered to these little finger-like processes. And when you look or you think about the finger-like processes from afar, they almost look like bristles of a brush, all right? So figuratively saying, we refer to these enzymes which are tethered to these finger-like processes at the apical or inward-facing uh, surfaces of these um, columnar epithelial cells which line our GI tract as the brush border enzymes. And then another uh, process we wanna go over is absorption. most importantly, right? So once we go through all these processes of digestion, uh, we want to actually absorb those nutrients that we have yielded. All right, so this is just um, the movement of molecules in the GI tract to the blood or lymph. And this occurs through the mucosal cells. These are the cells that are actually lining the GI tract, most of which are classified histologically as simple columnar epithelium, these cells that I just referred to you as, which have the microvilli at their apical surfaces. So again, we're going to be moving the food ultimately through the mucosal cells. And then finally, the final process of um, digestion that we want to talk about is defecation. And then this is just the final elimination of the indigestible or non-digestible substances from the body. So now let's talk about the major classification of the two different types of organs we find within the digestive system. First of all, we have the organs of the alimentary canal, which we already gave reference to, aka the GI tract, right? So these are the organs of the gastrointestinal tract or GI tract, a continuous tube running from mouth to anus. The foodstuffs actually travels through this tube as it's being digested. And a cadaver, by the way, the whole alimentary canal is about 30 feet long. So the organs of the alimentary canal in their respective orders are as follows. We have the oral cavity. esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus, all right? So that is the entirety of our alimentary canal. The accessory organs are all the other organs of the digestive system uh, in which the foodstuffs does not pass through. All right, so we really wanna emphasize this, and actually let me switch colors right here so we can separate these two different types of organs since we have the organs of the 
elementary canal kind of trailing off there. So accessory organs, again, are the organs through which foodstuffs does not pass. So as a reminder, food does not pass through accessory organs. So by the way, um, the, all the accessory organs lay outside of the GI tract, but ultimately connect to it through ducts. So I want to emphasize that with this note right here. So they lay outside the GI tract and connect to it by ducts. So these organs include the liver, gallbladder. By the way, gallbladder, uh, the word gall means bile. So the word gallbladder literally translates to the bile bladder. Whenever you see the word bladder, you know the organ is used for storing some type of fluid. In this case, it's for the storage of bile. That's why we call it the gallbladder. The pancreas and salivary glands. Now there are some other accessory organs that don't involve ducts, right? These are in the oral cavity. So I'm going to make a note here. And these are your teeth, which we're going to talk about in great detail coming up soon, and the tongue. But down in the abdominal pelvic cavity, all of the accessory organs are actually going to connect to um, your GI tract via ducts. All right, so this is just a big overview of the organs of the digestive system. It's basically, let me see if I can go back to the PowerPoint. So what we have here, this is a PowerPoint that basically shows some of the figures in your book, uh, the publisher's PowerPoint, kind of canned PowerPoint, if you will. And basically in the notes, this is just uh, a more photocopy friendly version of this diagram, just a big overview of some of the major organs of the GI tract, just to give you guys kind of a, an initial working familiarity with, um, with all of these organs and where exactly they are. And of course, in lab, you're going to have a, another opportunity to develop more of a, a stronger visual spatial um, association um, between and amongst these different organs. So let's go back. Where were we? OneDrive. Okay. So let's go back to this diagram. So I'm just going to fill out this diagram for you right here. Number one is the oral. Oh, I got to go make sure that the pen is on. I'm sorry. Here we go. Okay. Oh, shoot. The problem is, is once I turn the pen on, I got to remember that um, sometimes the computer thinks my finger is the pen. So I start inadvertently writing with my finger. So again, number one is going to be your oral cavity. By the way, I know guys, it may be really annoying. Every time I write, you hear the sound of the stylus hitting the screen. I was looking this up online and it doesn't look like I can do anything about that. The microphone can't parse out the sound of the stylus hitting the screen and not not at least with the recorder app that I'm using right now. I'm somewhat reticent to switch to another recorder app just because I've had so many problems with maintaining the sound in the other apps that I've used. So it seems that this system works okay, um, but I guess the sacrifice that we have to make is the sound of uh, the stylus along the way. So hopefully just like, you know, cars, going by a house on a busy street over time, our brains will just kind of edit it out. But anyway, so number one is going to be the oral cavity. Number two um, and number three are going to be um, 
salivary glands. Number two are going to be your sublingual salivary gland, or just one of them. You have a pair of them. Sublingual gland. Um, and then your submandibular glands, of which we just show one, but you also have a pair of them. And we'll talk more about those coming up soon. So this is going to be sub mandibular gland. Uh, number nine is going to be your third pair of salivary glands, just one of which is being shown here. So this is going to be your parotid gland. And then here we see the esophagus is number 10. You guys recognize the trachea. You know all about that by now. Esophagus runs posterior to the trachea, by the way. That's very important. So now this is the diaphragm. You guys know about the diaphragm, right? Splits the thoracic cavity or divides the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. So now we're downstairs in the abdominal pelvic cavity. This large organ right here is going to be the liver, number four. Uh, number 11 is going to be the stomach. I'm missing a C there. There we go. Now, the stomach then connects to... Uh, the first part of the small intestine, which is shown right here, this is the duodenum, which does not have a leader line connecting to it. Actually, let me get rid of the red. Let me do that in yellow instead so it doesn't. Yeah, here we go. Oh, for some reason, the, the highlighter doesn't want to work. Maybe the highlighter only works on texts. Okay, so let me try blue instead. Okay, so the blue works, good. So this is the first part of your small intestine called your duodenum, which does not have a leader line uh, associated with it, but I just wanted to point that out to you. And then down here, you see the rest of the small intestine. All right, the second part is gonna be your jejunum, and the third part is gonna be your ileum. So number 13 kind of collectively refers to the jejunum and ileum, so we're just gonna to refer to this as the small intestine. So foodstuffs is going to go down your esophagus, into your stomach, and then into your duodenum, and then into your jejunum, and ileum, the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum are all part of your small intestine, which leader line number 13 is referring to, just one component of. Uh, number seven, we get to the very end of the ileum, sometimes referred to as the ile uh, terminal ileum, that is, but I'm just going to refer to it as the ileum. This is the third and last part of your small intestine. And then the foodstuffs goes into your large intestine, which starts here, this initial portion of your large intestine, which I'm gonna highlight for you right here, is called your cecum. And then we have this little appendage hanging down from your cecum. It's tubular, it's hollow inside. This is your appendix, sometimes called the veriform appendix. Veriform means worm-like because it looks like a little worm. However, I'm just going to refer to it here as most people do as just the appendix. So the foodstuffs is going to enter the cecum and then go up through the first, uh, or I should say the second part of your um, large intestine, your ascending colon, which does not have a specific leader line associated with it. And then it's going to go through the um, transverse colon, which is associated with leader line number 12. And then the food is going to go down through your um, descending colon and then through your sigmoid colon. Let me highlight those for you, by the way. This is your descending colon and then it's gonna go through your sigmoid colon. Sigmoid colon is called the sigmoid colon because it's S-shaped. Sigmoid means S-shaped, basically. And then it's gonna go into your rectum, which is a place where we just store the feces that has formed through the uh, uh, digestible uh, materials passing through the large intestine. So this is the rectum. And then finally is, uh, the, the feces that is, is expelled through the anus, which is number 15. 
All right, so that's a big overview. I'm going to be left some leader lines missing over here. So let's go back. We talked about the liver. Uh, number five is going to be the gallbladder, your bile bladder, right? And then number six is going to be the pancreas. We're going to talk more about how these uh, specific organs are associated with your GI tract uh, coming up a little ways down the pike. All right, so I think this is where we're going to end this specific lecture video. This is usually where we take a little break in lecture as well. And then we'll go into the oral cavity in our next lecture video and see how far that takes us. All right, everybody, I'll see you soon.